in the summer, I decided to cycle the length of my home country. I decided to stick to a lot of the GB divide, which is an off-road and very challenging route. I, while camped the majority of the way, took all my own kit and explored some beautiful parts of the UK. It was a beautiful route, but definitely challenging. I honestly just had one of the most humbling experiences ever. Second puncture, and I've been absolutely midged out. This hiker bike stuff's really getting to me. It is so hard. Bloody mint. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Becky and I've been creating outdoor adventure content for a few years now, which is absolutely mental. Recently, I embarked on a new adventure and I decided to cycle the whole length of the UK. I wanted to stick to the UK to start my first ever bike packing trip. And this is what I did. I did Land's End to John O'Groats. I bought my bike back in June and two months after I was setting off on my over 1000 mile journey from the south to the north of the UK. You're probably wondering why I wanted to do this. I've been fascinated by hiking, long distance hikes and challenging myself. I bought the gravel bike and I decided I wanted to do an adventure on it. I decided to stick to the UK and see what adventures I could do here first before branching out. And I decided to set myself to wild camp as much as I could along the way. So this trip was about 1100 miles. It started in Land's End in the south of England and finished at John O'Groats, which is the top of the UK, which is in North Scotland. This was an awesome adventure, but something that was definitely really challenging. A couple of months previous, I found myself searching for a gravel bike that would cover everything I'd need for this great bike packing adventure. I got myself a Cannondale Topstone and began tinkering with it and setting it up to fit me, as well as purchasing some really quality alt lead panniers. After my bike was sorted, my kit was packed and I'd chosen the right panniers. There was so much planning and route prep to be done. This is where the journey began. Just me, my bike and my panniers. I got the train to the most southern train station I could in Penzance. This was a long old journey. Right, I am now in Penzance, just got off the train. I'm gonna ride to Land's End, see how far I get. Or I might pitch up somewhere a bit sooner. I'm just gonna see. The first leg of my journey was to ride to Land's End and I was welcomed with some grim weather. Once I reached there, I would then just head north. Just got to Land's End, cycled in, and uh, next stop, John and Groats. So, I'm going to go get some breakfast somewhere, probably around here, and then head on. The only way is north now. Bit nervous, but I'm buzzing. I can't wait. Wish me luck, fingers crossed. I just hope I don't get a puncture today. <laughs> I was definitely nervous to be starting this trip, knowing I had three weeks of cycling ahead of me and over a thousand miles. It had to be started with some Cornish pasties and a coffee. I hadn't done much this far south in Cornwall, so I was really skeptical on the terrain that I'd cover and where to find a camp spot each night. I'm in a field, I'm in a farmer's field again. This is literally what my camping options are gonna be for when I'm down south. You're not technically meant to wild camp, so it's really hard to find places. And I'm f fine with explaining to like a farmer what I'm doing, hoping they'll be all right with it, and then I'll have to move on, or even asking permission, that sort of thing. It is out the way here. I'm gonna leave no trace. Right, so this is indeed night one. Day one's just been completed. Each evening is literally gonna look like this. I'm gonna find somewhere to camp, that's flat and that's decent and suitable. I'm then gonna pitch my tent, do my sleep system. So with me, I've got the Far Raven Abisko one or light one tent. And this is a one man tent that I bring on all my trips. And then I've got a Thermarest with me. I've got an Xtherm with me. I've also got a Rab Neutrina sleeping bag. I bought these Orleb matching bags before I came, these pannier bags, and they have been awesome. I've got one on the front, I've got one 
attached to my bike for all my tools and then obviously these two 25 litre bags for all my kit and that has worked brilliantly I've got all my camping kit I've got a stove and gas I've got all my bike and tools and things on the main frame bag I was thinking yesterday the hardest part about this trip and any trip is getting started and just the initial start. That is what's most difficult. Once you've got that and you've sorted everything and you're actually here and there and you're in the groove, it's fine. But it's that initial start, whether it is getting up in the morning when it's absolutely peeing it down, whether it's just starting the initial trip because I kept delaying it and delaying it and I didn't think I was ready. And I don't think you'll ever be ready for something. These solo trips have always been a perfect way to think and to self-discover, to learn about new places and different people and just appreciate all the simple little things that happen throughout your day and just soaking in each moment challenging my mind and body. This really wasn't about getting to John O'Groats. It was about the journey I'd have on the way there. Whew, that is a steep old climb. Got the solar on. I didn't think there'd be climbs like that till uh, the way of Scotland. I am buzzing. I've just crossed the border from Cornwall to Devon. Just had the welcome to Devon sign. A lot of the down south section included small roads, bridleways and canal paths, which was really diverse. I was very shocked by the steep inclines Cornwall and Devon had to offer. The heat wave was relentless and staying hydrated was definitely a must. Travelling with minimal belongings and getting to see different places is definitely something I recommend. After a long day in the saddle, I'd offload all my kit, pitch my tent somewhere quite discreet and cook my meal over some gas. And then I'd just reflect on the day I had. Although carrying my own food, I'd often stop for snacks or a hearty meal if I could. It's a bit manky now, you tell we're heading north. <laughs> bit crossing over to Wales! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I can't believe it! After feeling quite matured from all the riding, I felt so emotional reaching this bridge which marked my journey into Wales. I am now in Wales, well Chepstow, crossed the River Severn yesterday, went across the famous bridge. It's been really cool and I really enjoyed the south of England, it was really beautiful, really different but it's nice to now be back in the mountains and see rivers and lakes and things like that. Last night I stayed at a campsite, I'm still here now, so I got myself a really well deserved shower, I really needed it, on a real no on a reality sort of check. I think down below you really suffer when you're on a bike all day, because obviously you've got sweat and you've got friction and you're in a saddle all day. So it is really demanding. Right. Um, today's hard. It's a really hard one. I think the last sort of four days have been full on for me. Um, just trying to get into Wales and smashing out big mileage that I haven't done for a while. Um, especially with them panniers, <laughs> you do feel the weight, it's bloody heavy. As soon as we headed into Wales, the hills got steeper, the lanes got more gnarly, and I was definitely suffering and in the pain cave most days. <sighs> I got my first puncture I had to deal with. First puncher of the trip. At half seven in the evening. Mm. 
However, the hardship made me respect the place and it was absolutely stunning seeing the mountains again. What a beautiful spot. This has got to be my favourite camp spot in Wales. It's absolutely stunning. What a day. Good good day it was. A bit steadier today, but um, really enjoyed it. Morning campers. This is my typical routine when I get up each morning on the trail. Today is such a beautiful day. I've literally just woken up. First thing I try to do is appreciate the beautiful view or nice weather that I've got and this morning I'm fortunate to have both of them. Because it was so hot, I drink loads of water to keep hydrated and regain the fluids. I then eat my overnight oats that are cold so oats with cacao powder that I left overnight. Then I'd make my sleep system and pack all my kit into their compression sacks, brush my teeth, and then start packing away everything into the correct pannier to try and balance my bike out and make sure I left no trace before leaving. The trail has taken a turn for the best. We went from roads in Devon and Cornwall to sort of off-road tracks in Wales. This is going to be a lot of hike-a-bike sort of section, getting off and just walking with the bike. Nature provides, just walking along and found these gems, raspberries, because it is raspberry and blackberry season. <sighs> That's so nice, free food. I've got some really frustrating news. I don't know if you can hear that, but um, my bike's dying. So I've just been on the roadside trying to fix it. It's my gears. They don't change and making awful noises. So I'm en route to a bike shop that's a mile away and I'm going to try my luck there. Luckily I had some great help and it turns out it was my front mech that was loose. So on I continued and the terrain only got steeper. This is a slog and a half up this steep hill. Been pushing for quite a while. I was really unsure about the gear and I chose for this trip. My bike is a nine speed bike which is not ideal for hills at all. Um, I had a really bad problem. I couldn't get into the top ring of my chain ring, but luckily went to that bike shop and the guy sorted, it was the front mech that was loose. I couldn't work out what it was. So what a lifesaver, I know for next time. But thank you for him for doing that and for Bakshi as well. Hello again, you lovely people. I have just got off the specialised Far Raven meet. What I did is I rode to Shrewsbury and from there I went to Sheffield where the Far Raven specialised meet was held. And that was absolutely awesome. I met some really down to earth and like minded people. We rode around the Peak District, stayed at a campsite in Edale and um, just had a great time. Yesterday I went from Sheffield back to Shrewsbury which was a long old trek, it's really hot at the minute and lugging a bike on a train wasn't a vibe at all. As you can see I've got some new kit which I'm really happy with. So yeah I'll give you a quick little overview recap right now on the past couple of days that I had. I met the guys at Sheffield at the Panya unit and from there we rode out to the peaks. This was sort of celebrating the collab between Far Raven and Specialize, and the two guys from Panya kindly led us on a beautiful route to Edale campsite. 
so nice riding the specialised diverges and trying out some of the new Fall Raven bikepacking kit. Once we arrived at Edel with a beer in hand, we were kindly cooked some lovely food by Jan at North Town Kitchen. After multiple meals cooked by Jan, you'll find his Instagram in my description. We all sat around the fire and drank his homemade cocktails before heading to sleep. The next day we had the lovely breakfast put out for us and would be riding these bikes all the way back to Sheffield. I had an awesome couple of days and I really thank everyone for making it so special. Right, so I'm now in the Yorkshire Dales with my great friend Fritz from Dalesway Therapy and I've just stayed with you and Yvonne, haven't I, last night? We've had the pleasure of this wonderful adventuress's company for an evening and now the Seba Cycling Club are escorting her on the next <laughs> leg of her fantastic yeah. voyage. Yeah, so we're going to head on, follow this A road and then we're going to depart. But yeah, Dale's Way Therapy, they do some great treatments and things. They've both given me treatments, set me on my way. I had a lovely massage this morning. Yeah. Excellent. <sighs> Cheers. Excellent. See you later. I am just at the bottom of Great Dunfell about to approach it so this is going to be some interesting stuff eating my good old bar cliff bar at a height of 858 meters great dunfell is the second highest mountain in the english pennines it is marked the highest road in britain and is roughly a five mile climb it is meant to be the hardest climb in england with an average gradient of nine percent and a max of twenty percent very, very steep and straight into a headwind. Beautiful views over the Yorkshire Moors and where we're heading. Along here and up over that pass. Woo! What a difference. Got into white out. This is bloody hard going. This is going to take me quite a while, I reckon. It's just so slippery. I've taken pressure on my tyres, but with the weight and it being raining for a while, it's so hard to manoeuvre. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of hiker bike sort of stuff going on and just taking it easy because I don't want to stack it. Worst comes to worst, uh, I'm just going to pitch up somewhere up here if I don't make it back down again. Here goes nothing. I swear to God, it's like pushing a bloody motorbike around with this weight. <laughs> God. Right, got boggy cleats. I'm going to readjust you so you can actually maybe get a better look. Got GoPro 10, didn't I? Halfway on my trip, just to make filming so much more easier. And, um, Hopefully this works. Woo! Now you get to see my vlog. <laughs> this is really good fun. It's just uh, bloody hell. <laughs> it's finding the best route and um, trying to manoeuvre with all this weight on the back. and trying to actually pick out a rough sort of track. So I can't even see a path now. God, it's cold. Just using OS maps this trip on my phone. It says I'm on the right route. I'm following the GB divide route. It's bloody freezing. <laughs> ah. <sighs> 
these gravel bikes are amazing. Oh, nearly. I am absolutely fragged. Absolutely. It's just, I, I'm feeling weak today. It's not, you have good days, you have bad days. And it's just not a good day. And today's been bloody challenging. I'm down to about one mile per hour, pushing through bogs and over rivers. I've come off once, it just chucked me off hitting a rock. And there's been some really gnarly river crossings. And if you know, cleats aren't the best for grip. Um, but these have been pretty good specialised ones of gritty bottoms, grippy bottoms. Wet cleats for the win. <laughs> and I was thinking like this, I was like thinking, oh, it's a rough day, rough old day and I feel fragged. And then I just stopped and looked and looked where I am. And I've barely seen anyone today. And it's just me, my bike and my belongings. I've got everything I need, um, especially when there's a stream over there. And it's just perfect. It's so quiet, it stopped raining. And it's so peaceful. And this is what it's all about. When you have crap times and you're feeling really shit. And then you just wake up again and realise where you are and how good it is to be here. And this is what it's all about. This is what adventures and trips are about. This feeling that you get. And I've got to say, I've learnt so so much on this trip it's probably been one of my most life-changing trips and moments in my life and um i've loved it definitely sold on back bike packing it's amazing right i'm gonna crack on and when it gets to about half six ish i'll look for somewhere to pitch Ideally next to a stream with some water Get a uh, dehydrated meal on Bloody mint it's a Bit nicer river crossing <laughs> This trail chews you up and spits you back out I swear to god It's just, it's literally pathless It reminds me of the Kate Raff trail doing this Soaks feet, wet socks And trying to find where the bloody path is Or just making your own route But obviously when you're lugging all this weight it's really tricky <sighs> there's a pitch right over there absolutely stunning really beautiful but i don't know what the weather's saying tonight so i don't want to pitch that side of the river and tomorrow this be like a torrent because you know our water levels rise so i'm going to cross as much as i can tonight and then pitch somewhere what a day, what a day. That hill took a lot out of me and so is this track, but it's been worth it. <laughs> I'm in the tent, got my water from the river, got my uh, meal for tonight, pasta bolognese, lovely. Swapped out halfway in. Jake kindly gave me his synthetic sleeping bag. It's a two season, so it's a bit cooler than the bag I originally have. But it's not down, so I'm really liking that at the minute with me being quite sweaty, it being wet, it being damp, it just picks up and soaks up any moisture. So synthetic is great. Got my Far Aven Specialized sort of hoodie synthetic, synthetic jacket on. And yeah, just sorting life out. It's so nice to be in the tent and just chill and relax and get warm and have some food. It's it's a simple thing, isn't it? The weather just started absolutely tipping it down as soon as I got in and got cosy. So happy days. Really happy with today. It was challenging, it was brutal, but it was it was awesome. <laughs> Morning! What a morning, it is beautiful. I'm just packing away my stuff. Right, little update, was coming 
off that bridle way down into a gravel track, really beautiful, stunning gravel track. But basically, the breeze I've stopped is my Orleb panniers have spaces in them to fit the actual rack. And I just stopped, one of them was like half hanging off. And that's because the spacer, I've lost one just coming down that route. That's why it's so vital. I literally bought a couple spares just in case this happened. I'm so happy for that. After the few days of slogging from Shrewsbury, it was so nice to reach Sedba, where I stayed with my good friends and then headed into the Yorkshire Dales. How wonderful it was to ride a bit of the Pennine Way and experience all the North has to offer, including this lovely viaduct. This is Alston Arches Viaduct, built in 1851. I can't believe it. I've literally just reached the Kilda Water and Forest Park sign. It's actually mental. I remember looking ages ago at Kilda and thinking, bloody hell, that's a long way off. If I make it there, I'm going to be chuffed. Because it's just, tomorrow means I'll be on the Scottish border. And it's like over halfway. Kilda Forest is the largest man-made woodland in England, with three quarters of its 250 square miles covered by forest. The first plantings were in 1920, and it mainly consisted of spruce trees. It was absolutely stunning cycling through here, and it meant it was the last chunk before I reached the Scottish border. I'm in my tent now, got some food, I got real termat pulled pork which is probably one of my top, my favourite meals. I bought loads of these off base camp food before coming, just stocking me up on meals because if you ate out every night it'd rack up to a lot of money and plus it gives me the option of not relying on places and having my meal right in my tent. Deep down inside me a tiny voice was calling. At first scarcely audible, it persisted until I could no longer ignore it. It was the voice of the wild places, and I knew that it was now part of me forever. You know what's really funny? I'm not that far out of the Scottish border and I've experienced two things that make it really Scottish. It absolutely pissed it down this morning and it's drizzling at the minute now. And second thing, midges are in full swing. Got bitten alive this morning. Welcome to Scotland. <laughs> this is mental. So beautiful with the heather though. This is my path at the minute. Scotland, baby! Woo! And now uh, I've got some more water supply, so feeling good, feeling fresh. It stopped raining, touch wood. <laughs> As my journey continued through Scotland, more problems occurred with my bike. I was recommended to get a new cassette, chain ring, and chain, but managed to save a bit of cash and just got a new chain as my old one was stretched. I left the concrete jungle of Stirling and headed out to the Trossachs where I pitched my tent for the night. Tonight's camp in this beautiful woodland, absolutely stunning. So nice to be in the Loch Lomond area now. Absolutely mental how quick time's going and the distance we're covering. Today was definitely an easier day. I got a new chain, I got a new saddle. What a place to camp. I'm literally surrounded by blueberries. So beautiful. I've been told so much how happy I seem uh, by people like strangers that I meet. And why wouldn't I be? Look what I'm doing, look where I am. I feel so free, I'm outdoors every day. I'm living and sleeping outdoors. 
I feel so happy and I'm really honoured to be here and so lucky and I want to thank everyone for supporting me because I'm I'm really happy and I'm loving it and I ha even though there's hardships there's challenges it's so so worth it morning there is a life I lead in this city hurrying to cut my teeth can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? It's a washing sort of day, drying your washing So I've just pinned everything to my panniers in the centre I've got my waterproof and my tent, my Farhaven tent. Got my new saddle which I'm really happy with, I got it yesterday. It's more designed for a woman's shape. And down here you would have seen, I've got a new chain. It's a nice clean chain that fits and that isn't stretched. Overnight I normally just padlock this, best to be safe and sorry. Got my two water bottles. Over here I've got the Farhaven Specialised little pouch that I put bars and tools in which is ideal got my quad lock for my phone with OS maps and then this lovely little bag for all my cameras and things a bit later start today it is half nine well, I normally leave a bit earlier it does vary between like seven to half nine if not a bit earlier um, but I did a few emails and posting on Patreon and Instagram. Right, I'm on the bike. I'm following the Rob Roy way this morning. I spent about half an hour procrastinating at the bottom of this hill, whether to come up it, because it's so steep and with this weight and my recent problems with the bike. I was gonna go slightly longer route, but it takes you on a less steep incline. And I was thinking about doing that, and I was like, oh, you know what? Sod it, I'm just gonna go for it. Ben Law's side over there. And I'm gonna be going up and over, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be steep. It's gonna be so challenging, but it just shows you like sometimes you really overthink things that don't need to be overthought. It was such a relief to reach this lock at the top and I was treated to a lovely descent on the way down. After a few miles of descending the really fast road, I reached a really remote and desolate village. From there I took this bridal way through the moors and it was absolutely stunning. How free and wild it felt. I didn't see anyone for a long while even after setting my tent up that night. Got the more sea of blueberries all the way down this section. It's so beautiful. I've been looking for somewhere to camp, but it's all quite slopey and boggy. The following day took me to Loch Rannoch and from there I was in the depths of the highlands. Afterwards I took this path that headed towards Fort William. Look where I am. This is stunning. 
this is proper highlands now. Well, it had to happen sooner or later. Another flat. Yeah, I reckon it's just the stones maybe, or I've hit something funny and it's pinched. I don't know. I'm going to check it out now. Second puncture and I've been absolutely midged out. They are so bad. I've never ever had them this bad. <coughs> I'm literally choking on them. Oh my God. They are, so I've never really bothered with smidge, but man, I was putting it on like no tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna hope this holds. I don't know what's wrong with my back tire, whether the tire wall's gone or what, but we go back down to youth hostel along this side. I'm gonna go before I get eaten alive. I honestly just had one of the most humbling experiences ever. I punctured once, which I showed you. I got down the gravel track a little bit more, punctured again. I was like, oh, bloody hell. I, I just couldn't believe it. And I think it's something to do with my tyre wall. It's got worn so thin, and I'll show you. It's just crazy because of the miles and the braking and the weight. It's literally bald, nearly. Changing my inner tube, doing the second one, and the midges, man. Oh, they've never been so bad, ever. I was in a boggy area, there's loads of grass, and that's obviously made it worse, and it's been hot and raining, and oh... They were all over my face. I could feel them biting me. They were getting in my eyes, in my mouth. I was coughing on them. I was literally running around like a headless chicken trying to take this um, this inner tube out and check my tyre over. And I was running around. Just, it must have looked like I've absolutely lost it, running around with a bloody tyre, just literally shouting into the air a lot of swear words. <laughs> Good job we are in a remote location. But, yeah. After my little nightmare, the only way was up. And let's just say Scotland isn't a place for the faint-hearted. This hiker bike stuff's really getting to me. It is so hard. It's really steep now. And I'm literally just been pushing my bike, getting attacked by uh, midges. <laughs> wow, the view is absolutely stunning. This is incredible. It's literally like I've climbed a Monroe with my bike today with these views, how high I am. Just looking over Loch Ness. This is so gorgeous and all the heather. Loch Ness is the second largest loch in Scotland and it stretches for 23 miles and it's rumoured to have the Loch Ness monster swimming in its waters. After day and day, mile after mile, it started to merge. Instead of focusing on the miles in the distance, I was focusing on the small things around me, taking in the different weather, the different surroundings and the people I'd meet. Somehow this trip became a routine and it started to feel like a way of life, but almost like a pilgrimage for me. Luckily my tyre wall held up for the time being and I found myself 70 miles away from John O'Groats. I am done for the day. That was a 70... Eight mile day, something like that. I am 70 miles away from John O'Groats, which is absolutely crazy. I can't believe it. To be honest, it's quite sad. I was thinking about it today and I was thinking this is the end of this adventure and it's been so epic. And like I said before, it's been like a pilgrimage for me. It's just been so good for the soul and I've really enjoyed it. That's what I've been thinking about today, that it's actually coming to an end. And I'm so thankful and lucky that my body and me and my bike have made it from one end of the country to the other. 
obviously I'm not done yet still got 70 miles to go anything could happen but I could potentially be in John O'Groats tomorrow if not the next day If I had to be completely honest, I'm slightly buzzing. My lovely Patreon, Mitchell, gave me a load of mountain house meals and I've never tried one. I was saving them for a trip. And tonight I have got buffalo style chicken and you make your own wraps with it. So I bought some wraps today and uh, I'm going to try it. So yeah, really looking forward to this. Thank you so much, Mitchell. Also gave me some other bits and bobs and been amazing. So thank you so much, I really appreciate it. We are living it up. I'm sat in here because it's a little bit chilly with the wind, but I'm really glad it's windy because it saves the midges. This doesn't look too shabby. It's really spicy, so it's gonna warm me up. I'm just going to put it in here, sort of make like fajitas. Does anyone want to chuck us some mayo? That would go down a tree. Caught behind the Venetian blind Try to reach for the city lines This ain't where I belong Ain't look at me, man, what I become I've been running east Looking for something Digging deep Since 99 To be honest, I am going to be so happy well, I don't have to change another bloody inner tube. So glad I stocked up. I got four inner tubes <laughs> at Fort Augustus. This is the final push now for about 30 miles. And I'm at John O'Groats. Could make it tonight. I'm not going to because a friend said she'd take, give me a lift tomorrow down south a little bit later in the day. So. I'm going to find a really nice spot tonight, take a slow ride in tomorrow. And uh, as my dad always used to say, good old bushwhacker, it could always be worse. And he always used to tell me, like list things that could be worse about a situation and how lucky the situation you're in. So right now I could be eaten alive with midges, what happened the other day, could be raining. Couldn't have it. I might not have any spares. I could be on a main road that's so busy. I could have none of my stuff working. I could be hungry. There could be so many possibilities. So when you think about that, I'm in a good place and makes you feel more positive. That's always worked for me anyway. Because this isn't even a bad situation. I'm just getting pissed off because it so close now and I was like oh I hope this is the um my final set of inner tubes to get me to John O'Groats morning campers today is my last day on the lead jog I cycled yesterday to about five six miles out of John O'Groats really struggled to find somewhere to wild camp so I'm literally just in a farmer's field now. Yeah, I'm just gonna pack up now and take a slow ride into John O'Groats. Absolutely mental, I can't believe it. It is extremely hot today, I'm so hot in here. It dropped pretty cold in the night. It was the coldest night so far. I've seen parts of the UK that I never knew existed and I've seen history and beautiful landscapes and met some really lovely people and seen how different people live heard some really whacked out accents it's just been really nice and it was a good way to sort of cover the uk as i hope after this 
just to branch out a bit and see more of Europe and the world. And I guess this was my sort of final big trip in the UK. Well, I hope so anyway. We'll see how things go with travel. It's the final road. And I can see the sea. <laughs> I haven't seen the sea since Land's End, I don't think. Absolutely gorgeous. And what a day for it. I can't believe I've got about six miles. <laughs> and before anyone asks me as much as I thought about it I'm not hiking back to Land's End or cycling or whatever <laughs> after around 20 days and some serious miles covered I didn't track it I finally reached John O'Groats just me and my bike a great bike packing adventure so I finally made it to John O'Groats. Happy days, done and dusted. I'm gonna be heading 16 miles back now to meet Anna, but you can just see the signpost, just got a photo over there. Yeah, thank you so much for watching and thank you for all the support. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and following my journey. I really appreciate it if you've made it this far into the video. I want to thank all my wonderful Patreons for supporting me. You are all listed in the description. Thank you again and take care.